Okay, cool. Alrighty, so, it's important. As you can see, um, good old our friends iOS and Safari are not helping out a lot. Um, but I just come along Firefox, Chrome have, and there is state like push notifications probably one of the it there's the biggest push to get this into Safari. Never mind the pun, um, and for very good reasons. Why? So when I started a little bit of a story, when I started looking into push notification, it was actually for a client of ours who. Um, came to me with the same kind of thought process. Hey, uh, we want to build a native application. We want to in increase our uh, client's engagement. And I was like, cool, what, what do you get them to do? Oh, we want them to send them push notifications. Uh, okay, fair enough. Is that it? I was like, yeah. So you want to build an iOS and an Android app for that? Yeah, and, th and they obviously need to see the, their, like their, their payments and the, the stuff on the screen on their mobile device. Like we want to have a really clean, quick experience for them to see all that stuff. And I was like, cool, what's your budget? Oh, you know, we're thinking about going small for now and then big later. I'm like, okay, all right. How about like quote them something massive for both iOS and Android because it is and it's it's hard to find good developers who can do it in a short period of time. And then they're like, no, can't do that. Okay, fair enough. How about we go with web? How much are you willing to sacrifice? You already have an existing email workflow, which is how you notify your customers at the moment, um, and that's what you know. They click on the email and it takes them to the to a website. That's not that great, and um, we'll go from there. And then how about we start looking at a PWA to create your user experience for the mobile? And so that's what we did. We went down the path, so I, I helped this customer go down the path of an enhanced user experience. And we actually rolled out for the first time push notifications, and this was about a year and a half ago when the API was not as good as it is now. Um, and it was only on Android. So we rolled out push notifications only on Android, and uh, being a project, we had analytics across everything. Over the course of two months, 86% of the users who received push notifications actually opened their statements and the, the actual um, payments that they were getting through. I can't explain exactly what, but 84% of users actually opened it. Compared to the users who never had push notifications, so say iOS and people who never actually used their phones at all, uh, only 22% of people who relied on email notifications actually opened the statements and actually checked this thing that they were making so much of an effort to, to ship out to customers. And it was a really good experience. It's just a shame that nobody knew about it, or at least the people who never checked their emails and didn't bother, didn't know about it. Um, and everything pointed to the PWA. So obviously, if they click their email, it redirects back to the PWA. So even on a phone, they get a decent experience, even if they're on, a, on an iOS device. So this was actually very fascinating for the customer. Now, most of the customers were actually using Android, so it was actually great for them. They actually were very happy, and then the time investment was about a month, uh, as compared to, I think the estimate for the iOS Android was about four to six months. Uh, and that's like a short time for, for, the, for these big applications. Um, and yeah, and the, the actual experience was quite good. And as we progress with web apps, it's progressive, which means that the enhancements were in fact done over time, and you know, we, Created fallbacks for different scenarios like polling for iOS, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, it was a, the the reaction and the effects were quite huge, even though push notifications are not supported on iOS at the moment. And they're working on solutions to get there. Um, but for now, sadly, it's not that great. So what I wanted to show you guys today, um, I guess most of you are developers. Am I correct? Yeah. So I kind of want to walk through. I think about how this tool can be useful, and I can show you a lot of code as well, and I think that's a good idea. But because the spec has changed quite a bit since I last worked on it, and I worked on push notifications manually, um, I was actually having a chat uh, with, sorry, what was your name on the back there? Josh. Josh. I was having a chat with Josh about like how the API is quite a pain, and it can be a bit of a pain across multiple you know, uh, browsers, and, and uh, keeping track of your service worker, et cetera. And so for funsies, I actually thought, look, why not? It's 1 a.m. in the morning this morning. So I thought, why don't I build something brand new right now, and see if I can create a, good, a decent enough experience of push notifications. So I tried to do that. This code is shit, sorry. But um, I think it will do the job for uh, the sake of a presentation. I wonder if there's a presentation mode. There is. No, okay, screw it. Yeah, uh, okay, we'll go with Zen mode. All right, can you guys see this? Is it, can you guys actually see that? Yeah, okay. I will try my best to make this easy to work with, but, okay, let's have a look.
Oh, that's helpful. Thank you very much. Alrighty. What is going on? Nope. Oh, yeah, sorry. Well, that helped. So, me being super creative, I thought that the one thing that I could do that could be useful in this piece of time is I could build a chat application. Why not? Because chat applications are fun. But what I'm going to go, go through is pretty much the code that it took me to get from a chat application that basically does polling. So for all intentions purposes, it's just a chat application that does a bunch of polling. It's just a view application, nothing too crazy. To show you what it is for me to register a service worker with push notification, PWA support, all of that stuff. Um, and this basically applies to React as well, So because the React, React Create React app actually has PWA support out of the box as well. So it's the it uses the same technique, so it uses the same register service worker uh, packages. Um, and then it also uses Workbox. Um, and I'll talk about that a bit more soon. So what is involved, I'll just, as you're all developers, I'll go through what is involved in getting a simple application to work with push notifications. OK, number one, let's go from the server. Your server needs to be able to send push notifications. What the heck is a push notification, and where do you send one to? How many of you know what a push notification is exactly? W or where do you send it to? How, how does your server know where to send a push notification to? Anybody? OK, fair enough. Um, the server knows because, let's see. This is on my computer. I'm going to allow push notifications. So I've enabled push notifications on this. OK, so now I've created a user. And this user has basically got a notification. This got created by Chrome when I registered this user for, for notifications. And this is what Chrome gave me. Chrome gave me an API endpoint to hit where basically this user, this browser, is going to get notified on. That's basically it. That's what a, a push notification is. There are obviously keys around that, and there's authentication around it. But essentially, this is what, this is what a push notification is to a user. I store that on my server. So on my web application, when the user registers, I send that registration subscription to my server, and I store it. So that for the future, when I need to send this particular user a notification, I know where to send it to. Right? So far, that makes sense. So it's nothing magical. right? It's a URL that I, I post to, or rather, I, I web push to. And there's a library that does that. Right? So that there is what a um, Anything. So if you if the register if the push notification was registered on uh, Mozilla, Mozilla has their own um, endpoints that, that they hit. So this is why Mozilla and Firefox are the ones. I'm sure Opera has the same. And basically, anything that supports push API would provide you with the equivalent, uh, either leveraging Google's or their own. So Mozilla has their own as well, right? And so that's what happens on the server. Now, how does it? How how do you actually send push notifications on the server? Well, first things first. Um, you're going to have to create a way to identify your server. So if I go through the server code, essentially what happens first is I have these Vapid keys. You'll notice that we use this library called um, Web Push. It's a standard node library that actually helps, basically handles most of the, the Web Push protocol for you. You don't have to do much for, about it. Um, you'll have to create Vapid keys. Vapid keys are basically your um, Voluntary application server identification keys. Uh, you generate these, and you basically have a public key and a private key. Uh, obviously, you should probably not check these in, but for the sake of the demo, I'm just junking them all here. The public key is what you send to your front end. When your front end registers itself to subscribe for the service worker, it actually passes this public key in. Um, and when you send push notifications to um, the, the the Google endpoint or, or whatever endpoint you're sending it to, you're sending both. Uh, you're sending it with the public key, private key combination. So essentially, the server knows that not a random person is sending a push notification to this particular user. So if you manage to guess the actual user's endpoint, uh, they can't actually just, not anybody can send it. So this, this is what protects and makes sure that you're the only one who's able to send notifications to that particular user's endpoint. 
Um, and then for the most part, it literally is just as simple as, let's see an example, hey, here's a payload that I want to send, web push, send notification to a subscription, which is the thing that I showed you before, this, um, this object over here, this massive notification object over here. That's basically the subscription. Um, just send, just go web push, send notification, that subscription. Web push is already configured with my API keys. And stringify the payload, and you're done. Here's the entire payload. I send it. It can be anything, really. It doesn't have to be something fancy. That's as simple as it is to send push notifications from your server. Nothing more. It's actually just that, right? Um, obviously, you just have to store those notifications and get them, retrieve them. Fair enough. All right. Now, what does it take to get push notifications working on your client side? Let's start by registering a service worker. You need a service worker. Yay, hurrah. Now, if you actually go to, uh, this, this file basically came out of the box for me for in my um, view, CLI, create, blah, blah, blah thing. And the same thing is there for React as well. Uh, it's basically just in your main, um, you just have to include this one lovely file. So, if I can remember, yep. you just include this file, register service workers, and register service workers will use this package, register service worker, which basically will provide you with um, some lovely hooks into actually um, using, making it a better user experience to actually deal with your service worker. And this is at the app level. This is not at the service worker level, this is at your app level. For example, when you register your service worker, um, It'll give you a callback to say ready, the service worker is ready. When the service worker got registered, um, it can give you back the registration and you can do certain things. Like for example, I am actually storing the service worker registration in my Vuex store so that I can actually do other things with it from my application level. Um, and then things like cached, when there's an update available. So for example, you know, people hate, did you hate it when you've got a service worker, a brand new service worker and your users don't actually get that update? Uh, and they're waiting on behind a refresh so that you know they can actually get the latest code or whatever. Uh, you can actually f set a refresh in here, or you can you can configure a pop-up that says, "Hey, user, there's new content. Do you want to refresh your browser so that you can get the latest content um, when it's updated, when it's offline? If you want to trigger custom features when you're actually working offline, this is where you can hook that in. And if something went wrong with your service worker installation, you can hook that in here. A very easy like API to use. This makes life so much easier. Um, dealing with service workers in general. Then, uh, going forward from there, I obviously customize my service worker. So you can get the straight out of the box generate SW service worker. And this is basically using uh, Workbox. So this is using Workbox. Um, if you are having to deal with service workers today, please use Workbox. It will save you a ton of time, a ton of effort. Um, and you don't have to manage, they basically have a bunch of strategies out of the box for you. So, you know, network caching, uh, network first, cache first, uh, stay a while, revalidate, uh, re or whatever the hell the thing's called. A uh, bunch of strategies that are available out of the box, very easy to use. So I'll show you how I use those things. Example, so I took my service worker and if you look at my view config, this is where they kind of do the, I'm just using the v PWA, the view PWA plugin. And in this case, I'm basically saying, hey, use the inject manifest uh, strategy for Workbox, which basically means, hey, don't just use your own P uh, service worker, use my code as well, because I've got some custom stuff. This is a good way to do, this is what you should probably use if you want to do push notifications, where you're actually enhancing the service worker with custom uh, features. So I basically provided it what my service worker is, uh, where to import the Workbox from, etc. That's pretty simple stuff. But then let's look at that service worker. Now, don't freak out. This is the service worker enhancement that I've created. So basically what happens is all this code gets tacked on to the end of the generated service worker. So Vue will, will handle all the pre -cache, the caching, all of that stuff for me, and it will load Workbox for me. So it's complaining because it's like, where the hell did you get Workbox from? Don't worry about it. When this file gets compiled in the final service worker, Workbox is actually available on this file, right? Uh, so I can probably put it as a global saying, you know, to, to, to turn off the validation around that. But here's some interesting stuff that I'm doing. Number one, Workbox, if you want your uh, service worker to, hey, sorry, if you want your application to be uh, available as a installable application, you probably want to uh, make it available offline. Because if you don't make your app work offline, so that means when you're offline, it returns a 200 on your, you know, your main page or your startup start, start page, you cannot install your app as a PWA. It's one of the requirements. So what I'm doing is I'm basically saying, hey, 
service uh, using Workbox, this makes life easy. Oh, I, I remember having to do this by, by manually, it was a pain in the ass. So Workbox routing, say register route slash, when this browser goes to slash, can you please use the network's first strategy? Basically what that means is, hey, if you, if you are connected to the internet, please reach out to the internet and then get whatever is from slash. If you're not connected to the internet, please use whatever is in the cache. If you reach out to the internet, when it comes back, stores whatever it got back in the cache. So this way, every time that you're on the internet, it always gets the latest things, but then the next, if you happen to be off the internet, the last thing that you got is what it will return you. Um, and then what I'm, I'm doing, the same thing basically for, um, all my JS, CSS, and PNG. So for all of my images, JavaScript, and CSS filed, uh, can you also use network first? I could also use uh, stale while invalidate or something like that. I forget what it's called. While Sorry? While revalidate. While revalidate, that's one. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Stale, come on, they're so proud of this thing. Stale while, there you go. Stale while revalidate, that's the one. So I could use that, and basically what that does is it will serve the current um, the current file from cache, and in the background it will actually update the file in the cache, and then it will then the next time that you refresh it will uh, load the new one. Um, I would probably only use this for images. So for example, avatars or PNGs or something like that, which I don't really care if they don't get the latest one this time, but then the next time that they, they load it, they get the latest thing. Uh, JS files and other stuff, I probably want them to get the latest stuff all the time. All right, cool. So this basically, this here makes my app work offline, period. Now let's go into the push side of things. First things first, you're gonna have to, um, well, this is an event listener for push, yay. Um, and this is an event listener for the notification click, fair enough. These two things are my service worker, cool, no worries. There's a problem here, where the hell did I subscribe to something? Let's go find it. Remember how I said I actually stored my, my registration? So over here in my application, when my service worker got registered thanks to this fancy plugin thing, I basically go into my Vuex store and I save my registration. Cool, no problem. So then what I do is if I go into my store, my Vuex store, and I have the service worker store, you'll find that I have this big ass file. Don't worry too much about it. Here's my public key, by the way. This is where I'm, I'm storing my public key for the, uh, my Vapid registration. Um, what I do is I call this store service worker action thingy thing thing somewhere else. Where is it? Oh yeah, sorry. Store registration. So I, I, I call this function uh, save service worker registration. That saves my registration. Then what happens is when you go into the actual UI um, for this application, yeah. You'll see that down the bottom here, well, I've already got disabled notifications because I've, I've already enabled them, but I'll have a button that says enable notifications when you haven't done it so far. When you go onto that button, what you're essentially doing is you're basically clicking on this event that says, um, sorry, this is really fast, enable push notifications. What am I doing here? So what I do here is I, I get the registration. So if your application has registered the service worker, so that means you, you have a service worker, I then go and I call, first thing I do is I, I call get subscription. Get subscription basically means that if you've actually got a subscription already, it basically just returns that subscription. And if it returns that subscription, I, I call, um, you know, I call, um, um, I, I call save, su save submission and I also dispatch an event that says update the current user with uh, the subscription. So basically what I'm saying is, hey, if you've got a subscription on your, on your device, send it to my server so that I know it and I also save it in the, in the local. Um, but if, you, if that part fails, which means get subscription returns null, then I basically say subscribe. So, so in your registration, there's this thing called push manager. So this is the functions that you care about. So registration.pushmanager and registration.pushmanager.subscribe. So subscribe is the thing that actually subscribes you to notifications. And what you need to call is subscribe with your application server key, which is this um, URL base64 int eight array function. So basically it converts this um, public key, which is the string that you saw up the top here into a format that is a standard protocol for, for these guys, I guess. Here's the function down the bottom. Um, I'm sure there's probably a better way to do this, and I'm sure that the web push library actually provides you with a function to transform this, but I didn't have the time, so I was just like, yeah, screw it, find it on the internet, it's good enough. Um, and this is it, so if you just run this over here, this will register you to Google, uh, in my case, because I'm running Chrome, and it will register me with this application server key and basically say that it's, it's only visible for, for the user. 
um, and it registers myself. And then what I get is I get a subscription back. And then what do I do? Same thing again. I take that subscription and I send it to my server and I say, hey, cool, update the current user and pass in this object subscription uh, to that particular user. And that's basically how you end up getting yourself a subscription on the server side. No, oh, sorry, onto the server side and you have it on the client side and it's already registered to your service worker. Now that that's all done, the moment you've got the subscription and the subscription is registered, then you can come back to your service worker and this is where this stuff happens. Now that your actual Chrome application is ready and it's listening on, for a push event on that URL, every time that someone pushes to that particular URL, this event will get triggered. And what do I do? Well, basically, I can go and say, oh, I just realized that Flux is running, and that's really annoying. OK, hopefully a little bit better. Um, so basically, long story short, you can check to see if the client, um, you, can get the, you can get data from your, your um, push notification. You can send a bunch of data, actually. And you don't, not, not all of, it's not a fixed um, bunch of fields. I can send a whole bunch of stuff. For example, uh, if you were looking at my server, I was actually sending things like the title, the message, the chat user, the chat URL, the redirect URL. I, I'm sending all of this stuff in a push notification down to the client side. And then in my actual service worker, I'm able to then decipher what I want to do with that, for example. Um, first thing is I can, I want to check, OK. I get the data. Uh, depending on the data, I can decide what actions I want to make available on my push notification. And then uh, I want to show that notification. So here's the title. Here's the body, which is the message. Uh, some data that, that I pass along to the handler for push notifications. And then the icons and stuff and some actions. These actions are handled over here. First things first, what is this? It's client focus. This is client focus is a handler. Um, and basically, all it is is, hey, is the current user who's actually using this application uh, or getting this notification, do they have the app open or do they have the website currently in focus? If they have the website currently in focus, you probably don't want to actually show them a push notification because they've got it open right now. So why do you want to show them a push notification? Um, so this basically handles that case scenario. And if this user does, in fact, have the, the current app open already or they're currently focused on it, um, then don't bother sending the notification. If they have it open, but it's not focused, it'll still send the notification. That's what that function does. I don't want to walk through it entirely, um, but yeah, it just does a match across things. And you'll, I'll put all this code up later, so you can have a look through it if you want, if you're interested in that. But long story short, um, I have a bunch of actions. You can send actions along. Actions can, and these are just, at the moment, you can see that it's just a string. So it says action is reply, and it has a title, uh, see all, uh, see all messages, blah, blah, blah. And there's a badge, and there's an icon. And these are just images that are currently in my application. Now, these are all, this is for the sake of showing the push notification, right? Now, how do you, what, how do you react to the push notification? Once this, that's where you have this event listener called notifica notification click. This is where I can now get the event, the notification, and here is the data. This data is basically the data I passed in over here. This notification is basically this entire notification event that I passed in over here. So in the handler, I can do a bunch of things. For example, um, in this particular case, when you click on the notification, it will always close the notification. Because there's some notifications that you click on, and it doesn't do anything. So unless you actually program it to do so, it's not going to close. So first things first, close the notification. Next. Um, what I want to say is, depending on the action, so if the user clicked on the actions uh, that says see all, it will actually open and focus a URL that is slash. So, for, so in this case, I'm saying, hey, I want them to open the main page that shows them all their messages, uh, if they clicked on the see all button. If they clicked on reply, then it will actually focus on the reply URL, which is the one that I actually passed directly into the, the push notification, which might be a, a reply to a particular user. And last but not least, if they just clicked on the notification itself without going into the extra buttons down the bottom, um, then just literally take them back. It treated the same as uh, redirecting back to the, the redirect URL. And if there isn't one, then redirect back to slash. And then this is a promise. You need to make sure that you, hand, you, you wrap that promise inside an event wait until. The reason why it's important to do that is because um, your service worker will, will basically kill itself. Because remember, this is something that's running in the background of your phone. Your, your app is not actually live. It's running in the background. So you, this is the protocol that is used to make sure that your service worker knows to wait until this particular promise is, is executed. 
before it actually closes. So it, it, it makes sure that you, it's opened up the browser or it's focused the browser or does whatever it needs to do before it actually closes and kills itself off. Otherwise, you'll end up with a behavior where you know you, you click on a thing, it's closed the, closed the notification, but nothing happens. And you're left wondering what the hell happened. Debugging service workers is a pain in the ass. Don't put yourself in that situation. So this is this was most likely going to be the problem around that. Um, and yeah, that's it. So that's that's how you handle the push notification from the server. Um, oh, so yeah. So from the server, the moment I hit web push, it will it'll get handled by this push notification. So I've shown you how to register a service worker, how to register push with the push manager, how to um, send your subscriptions back to your server so that your server is now now knows who's this user and what's the subscription for that particular user. Um, oh, and how do you, dis how do you cancel uh, push notifications? Let's say you're a user on a phone and you don't want push notifications anymore. How do you do that? Well, that's also pretty easy. So you basically come into in your app, at your application level, uh, the same place where I showed you you can enable push notifications, you can also disable push notifications by basically calling your subscription that you've created, this subscription, just call unsubscribe on it. So basically, just call unsubscribe, and what that does, it'll tell Google, hey, look, kill this subscription, that URL will no longer work. If the server sends push notifications, nothing happens, basically. Actually, I think the server will actually get a 404, I think. Um, and that way, your server can also clear itself off. So if the user unsubscribes from the device, if the server actually gets a 404 on that subscription, uh, subscription post, you can actually delete that notification on the user on the server. So it saves you from having to, in the future, send them a notification if they don't have one. Oh, shoot. You guys OK so far? That was a lot, right? I apologize. But this was done this morning. Um, so I started at about 1. I finished around 6. Um, and yeah, OK. So now there's a bunch of stuff I haven't actually tested. Uh, and which is why I was like, hey, it'll be fun to kind of get you guys in the room. How many of you here use iOS? A few of you, yep. How many of you here use uh, Android? How many of you are running um, Android Pi, like the latest Android? One. How many of you are on Oreo? So and Android 8, yeah, okay, cool, awesome. All right, well, in that case, so I actually deployed this for shitsies to figure out what's going to happen. If you guys can go to that URL over there, uh, or if you have a QR scanner, you can go on there. Um, iOS? Yeah, go for it. Oh, okay. So for iOS, what I've done is I've implemented polling. So there's no push notification, sadly. But again, the whole idea of um, a progressive web app is that you're meant to be able to support browsers that don't have um, everything that you'd expect. All right. So, just a disclaimer: if you're if you're not able to log in or uh, create a user, it's probably because somebody else is taking your user, and I couldn't be bothered implementing uh, uh, ver validation on there. But yeah, basically, just try a different name or something. Hopefully, that should work. Um, so, to turn on notifications, you'll find that if you wow, you guys are fast. Like that's a lot of you guys. That was real fast. I clearly should have implemented a proper scrolling. Oh, well, anyway. Um, <laughs> clearly, I didn't test this far enough. Um, so you'll find that down the bottom of this blotched UI that there's a little button that says Enable Notifications uh, on the side um, of the little side navy thingy thing thing. Yeah, it doesn't work when you touch it. Are you on iOS? Yep, OK. So what does it say on iOS, actually? Correct. So you'll notice that on iOS, it actually says notifications are blocked. And the reason I'm able to do that is because if you look at my code when I was actually uh, writing this thing, uh, if you look at my store, I have this thing called um, a notification status. And notification status basically checks, hey, is notification in the window? And does the, the, the user have service worker? This check over here, notification in window, will fail on iOS. That way, it lets me know that, hey, this particular user has, does not have um, uh, <clears throat> the, the notification API in their browser. It also fails on um, IEs, old IEs, and stuff like that. So this is an easy way for me to block that feature. So iOS users will get a message saying, notifications are blocked. All right, so how many of you are 
So you're all there. Thanks, lol, for sending me a message. Um, so you can actually chat with each other because that's actually sending you guys uh, messages. But here's something I'd like you all to try. Have all of you guys added this to your home screens? Uh, you'll see a message on the side that says add to home screen if you haven't already. Have you guys added to home screens? Yep. <laughs> Alright, okay. Can I ask all of you guys to uh, close the applications, just like close it, minimize it, or do whatever you're doing, just cl close it and lock your phones. Actually, just all of you lock your phones right now. Okay, how many of you get notifications now from broadcast? Yep. How many of you see a message that says see all? Yeah, and if you click on it, where does it take you? Sorry? Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't know if Brave supports it. Um, worth checking. Actually, yeah, you, you tell me. <laughs> You're using it. This is why I, I, I pushed it. All right, okay, cool. Now, here's something. Um, who's uh, Jen, Jen News with a Z? That's you. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Uh, I reckon you can do me a favor. Could you lock your phone? Yeah. Yep, cool. All right, do you get a notification? I now, can you click on reply to, to CJ? I mean, I click on the uh, so click on, so there'll be a button underneath that that says reply to CJ. Or do you see two buttons? What do you see? Oh, actually, just come up. I actually am curious to know what it looks like on you. Yep, all right, cool. Yeah, so if you actually look at the notification, if you expand the notification, you might see a few buttons underneath that. One says see all messages, one says reply to CJ. So if you were to click on reply to CJ, yeah. and open up your application. So what I wanted to show you guys there is what that supports is deep linking. So what that means is I'm able to go not just to the chat per se, I'm, I mean, depending on the URL. So what I've done is I've actually got something in the service worker that, that handles routing. So if you look at my main router, I have this before hook. So one thing I found, this was a, a glitch. Actually, I wasn't expecting this. I thought it would work normally, but it didn't. So because the service worker and the, 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 the service worker is, is scoped at slash, and that's what the service worker is scoped at, if I was to redirect to a browser that basically is at slash chat slash CJ, it would actually fail on the service, service worker initialization. And so I actually needed to redirect to slash, and then from there support deep linking. So the way that I did this is that in my actual push notification, uh, when I'm handling the push notification, you'll see that what I do is I uh, service worker. Oh, it's on my server, right? So on my server, what I do is I actually send them to um, the origin, which is uh, whatever the URL is slash. So that's the origin. That's the origin where the, my service worker is scoped to. And then I have a query, which is where I, I have my deep linking. So basically, I have a query that says, "Hey." Go to slash, but there's a chat that I want you to redirect to. And when the user goes to that URL with slash chat, that's when um, it re the actual view application will internally deep link them to the place that they need to go, which was the, the chat with me, per se. Right. So if I was to go onto my thing, if I was to go onto push chat, say God. So wow, you guys are all here. So if I was to say Franco, who's Franco? Yeah. Hey Franco, what do you have, iOS? Yes. So okay. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, well, Franco, what I want you to do is, I can. so by the way, you can actually tell who has notifications who don't by looking at them and their little icon here. So I can tell that Franco doesn't have notifications. Whereas if I looked at my friend, what's his name? Uh, where are you, buddy? Sorry. I needed to fix this. Terrible. Anyway, Iggy. So Iggy? Hey, Iggy. So I, I tell, I can see that you've actually got notifications on. So, and this is because obviously I've stored them on my server, so I can do whatever the hell I want. Um, so, uh, was it Franco? Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, could you send me a message, man? Sure. I don't know, man. <laughs> Come on, tell me how much you love me or something. I don't know. Uh, 
I am curious. CJ. Uh, CJ, yeah. Yeah, I Did you? Okay. Oh, no, God, sorry. Uh, to God. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, I got you here. <laughs> Come on. Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? Did it not work? That's terrible. Did you? Okay. I'm hoping I, I registered my PLA, but I don't really know. Let's find out. No, I do have God 2.0. Who the hell is that? Someone's fast. Alright, okay. <laughs> Alright, well, I didn't get that. That sucks. Why didn't I get that though? Actually, you didn't even send it to me. What do you mean? <laughs> you haven't sent it to me, otherwise I would have seen it here. All right, let me find you here. All right. Uh, did you did it come through? You did. Okay. Oh, that sucks. I'm not getting any. Oh, hey, oh, there you are. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Looks like I must be on do not disturb mode. Stupid. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> that helped. Um, but yeah, so when I click on it, there you go. It takes me straight to uh, Franco. So on uh, web, ta-da, as well. So yeah, this works on both um, desktop and. Um, because the Chrome supports it, and Firefox will do the same. Okay, that's that's kind of everything I had to show you guys. Um, I will make sure that this is available for you guys to to see uh, later. Do you have any questions? I want to wrap this up now. Yes. Okay. Well, first, hands up. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's um, cheating because um, Chinese characters, for example, when they come into uh, uh, URL, you, you actually have to have uh, ASCII code. So this URL is actually just um, that's what the actual URL is. But xn dash dash wxa dot wtf will actually get converted to lambda. Yeah. So yeah, that's that is lambda. So I bought a bunch of these domains because shit, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> WTF is actually my, 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 my personal playground, and then I also own XYZ just because that's a bit more friendly than WTF because people get scared when they see that. Yeah, uh, sorry, here, yes. So uh, when you said about the source work and for the right, Yep. Uh, can you secure a string or not? Can you sorry? Like yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it's just a URL, right? So the service worker will then open a browser, quote unquote, um, with um, that particular URL. Now it's a bit interesting because if you haven't installed the app as an, if you haven't installed it as an app on your device, it'll open up Chrome with that URL. If you have installed the app, then the service worker actually recognizes that it's loading your app. So then it actually put, pulls up your PWA instead on Android. Right, so it's actually a really cool experience. Uh, I didn't actually know that until I just did it. So I was just like, "Oh shit, that's pretty cool." Because I remember back back when I did this last, when I clicked on the notification, even though I have the PWA installed, and this is Twitter, for example, Twitter's PWA. When I clicked on a link or notification from Twitter's PWA, it will still open up Chrome, and not the Twitter PWA and deep linking. But finally, they fixed that now, which is great. So I'm super happy about that, and, and you can see it here as well. Yeah. So yeah, you can pass in anything for, and in the case of this example, I was passing in the URL with a query string, which is chat, with whatever. And then I, I handle my application. Sorry, there's a question there, yes? Uh, two questions. Uh, the backlog of my mind from when they clash issues in iOS? Uh, they are very sketchy about that. They don't want to say and they don't want to commit. And I've seen this happen a lot. They, they generally don't commit until they do it. And the, uh, yeah. Nah. So the, the so there are obviously services that, that, that you can use, like one signal and a few others for push notification. I think there's Airship and a bunch of others or something like that. Um, but no, this is the actual web standard that's provided. And thankfully, the browsers are getting on board with actually providing that as a service out, uh, an available service. But I'm sure that there will be rate limits under the hood 
Like there would definitely like sensible rate limits must be there under the hood. Uh, if not for the sake of Google's API, at least for the sake of the user. So you don't want to have one application hit one user a hundred thousand times. Like that that just seems like a terrible thing to do. So I'm sure at least from Google's point of view, or at least from a from the actual endpoint point of view, there would be some sort of rate limiting, or there should be. I would hope so. But that's a great thesis. We can test it out right now with, by sending a gajillion push notifications. That's actually not hard to do. Actually, I feel bad for you guys because I'm about to do it. No, no, sorry, I won't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I would have hoped so, right? Um, well, then why don't we? Why don't we find out? Uh, wow, it just crashes. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> All right. Uh, who's my? Who's someone? Pick someone. Say your name. Where the hell are you, vessel? Where? I don't see you. Fuzz? This thing? Yes. Shit. <laughs> How the hell am I even know that? Okay. Uh, opening a new tab. Go. Oh wait, shit, sorry. Don't do anything. Oh, it does support it. Oh shoot. Don't tell me. But nothing's happening. How the hell do you check DevTools on Safari? Shit, I opened a mail. What? No, 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 it's a file. It's in main menu. Okay. Help. Dev tools. No, 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 no. You gotta enable it and restart it. They've lost already from from a sheer like getting on board perspective. They've lost. Actually, that's interesting because another thing that just failed is the local storage just failed. Um, by the way, that's how this application stores your user. So your user, current user, is stored in the local storage. So the fact that I just refreshed it and it actually failed to register service worker, sorry, the, the local storage is actually quite interesting. So um, it's Sorry? Oh, sorry. I have more, I have more to do. They, yeah, it looks like they have more to do. Um, I haven't actually tested this, but that's a good point. I should probably test it in the spec because I'm assuming if we go back, Safari, it doesn't doesn't seem to have it. I, I don't know because I look. This is just then. Like I got this just then. So maybe it's in a, in a preview version that they've got it. Um, really interesting. Okay. Well, worth testing, yeah, people. Ah, uh, okay, right. Uh, the net, yeah. Uh, I suspect. Uh, well, okay. It's what what yeah, testing out. Um, push notifications on the web if you do it via the developer. Um, really? Yeah. Because I, I noticed that there is an there is an Apple protocol push. Like there's an Apple right. specific they, they protocol. Push. Right. Yeah. Okay. Don't do that, guys, unless you're that, that, that desperate. Yeah. Um, there's a question around how it creates the, the digital URL, mm -hmm. and then it's like a Google or a Mozilla version. Yep. How does that work in practice, and is that going to scale? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, absolutely. So essentially, what you're looking at is this. Uh, where are you, friendly service worker here? So you're essentially looking at this one call right here, which is um, push manager dot subscribe. Now, depending on the browser that you're in, the push manager will either be for Mozilla or for um, uh, Chrome. I think.
And yeah, it will actually um I'm running out of stuff. Where did my push go? Ah! Okay. See that? Do you guys see this URL? Oh shit. Ah. Leave me alone. People. All right, here. So do you see that URL over there? This is the URL on Mozilla. So that's the URL that, so you, if you can have a look, or if you want to compare, that's the URL from Google, if someone registered on Google, and that's the URL from Mozilla. And so depending on the browser that you use, the actual push endpoint that you get is different. Um, but it, it registers appropriately as well. You yep. really worry about No, you, you don't, you don't well, because it, it's basically a web standard now. And depending on the browser that you choose, I'm sure more browsers will either opt in to these, or they will create their own. So Brave and Opera, it's, I don't have Opera, but if someone has Opera, can you please test it for me? That'd be great. I, I don't know who. Well, I've used Alexei. Alexei? Use use yeah, it is? What, what's, your, what's your username, dude? 3.14. Far out, okay. Now, but ha you haven't got push yes. notifications. <laughs> Enable push notifications, dude. I just did. You did? Oh, okay. No, man, you haven't. Can do one more thing. Send it to your what? Yeah. No, no, no. I, I need I need you to enable push notifications so that I can oh. find out what your notification looks right. like. Yeah. I apologize. It is enabled. Actually, no. You have to click. <laughs> Sorry, my wedding might be terrible, but anyway. Okay. Allow. Yeah. Allow. Good. Oh. Amazing. Now let's find you. Are you sure? Oh, there, I see you, I see you, I saw you, I saw you, 3.14. Wait, there you are. Oh, it's using, yeah, so Opera's using Google. There you go. So Opera's using Google's, uh, yeah, exactly. Makes sense, right? So yeah, so the browsers will implement their, but this is the web standard, so this is the thing. Because it's a web standard, you expect all the browsers to follow the same API, so it saves you a ton of trouble. So you don't actually have to worry about it across multiple browsers, or, well, you do. Um, Cool. All right, guys. It's it's fair bit over time. I, I feel bad because I think we've gone stretch over. So any more questions? Any anybody else? Anything else? I think I've answered everything. I hope you guys found this interesting. Thank you very much. That's me. That's yeah, and I'll have the code up somewhere. I'll, I'll link it in so you guys can have a play around with it. Yeah, please. Thank you. All right, thanks for coming, guys.